there is only one time every single year where we crack out this particular outfit, and it is of course for the St. Patrick's Day event. And frankly, there's only four objectives we have left. We got most of them done on stream last Wednesday, but it has been during these events doing the missions that we've got some of our absolute best trophies over the course of the past couple of years. So we're gonna set out for the objectives, and in the meantime, because we've got fewer objectives left than normal, we'll actually be able to go for a little bit more of a casual hunt in the process. So the exciting thing for me about this particular hunt is the fact that we can take the time to go after red deer, brown bear, the other species that we don't need for the objectives. So here on Vada Ball, we need two. We need an airborne rock ptarmigan, which will be no big deal whatsoever, and a roe deer over 175. Depending on luck, we can end up getting that really quickly. We could spend quite some time going after it, but solid red deer here, able to drop him, all these hinds are coming in. On a typical hunt, maybe I would try to actually drop all those and not spook anything. There's one tiny stag back there that may as well be a hind. But today, because we do actually have some objectives to do, and there is a lynx one, and it's the lynx ones that typically give us the most trouble for these events, we are going to go ahead and move along. Just spook the red fox there too. But as for this stag, Double long at 25 meters, he is going to be a 213, so not a bad way to get us going. And we're going to scoot our way up to hopefully kind of the center area of the map along the river, and we'll see if the road here cooperate. Well, I talked about luck. Our first road here buck is a 170 to 220, but I'm pretty sure he's spooked. And our long range weapon is the 12 gauge over under with slugs, and you can't put the slug scope on this shotgun, so. This could be a bit of a struggle, but I think if we just kind of slowly move around, as we've got a red deer stag calling up there, we can either wait it out till he is calmed down and call him in, or maybe we can kind of scoot into a reasonable range to even get him with open sights. Well, that would be him, right down there. I think he's probably still spooked, but that is most certainly in shotgun slug range. Now, if they don't move around too much, I think what I'd rather do is crawl down to that rock on the left and just try to prone up on that to be able to get a shot. Because I do think if we crouch up, we could potentially spook him. And it might take a second to get on target. It's still a really tiny front sight post. So let's just scoot up to that. I think he might be looking at us. I can't tell. When you aim down sights from prone, you kind of get a little bit of elevation. I hope that was the right one. I don't think there are any other rodeo bucks around. So we'll see if that's going to be 175 plus. He was down in like this little dip, so it was really tough to tell. We actually somehow got the lung shot. I thought maybe just the slugs killed him from the fact that it's such a big round for a small animal. That's 173. I had a feeling. I knew he was right at the bottom end of that estimate. So that's not going to be big enough. And the hunt for a 175 plus continues. Looks like a decent stag out there, but not a monster one. But it was down in this area that I was trying to get to. So I guess maybe it's good that he led us this way and not a different direction, but two away from getting that first road to your buck to complete the objective. Oh boy. Here we go again. This is going to be close. 140 to 195. Is he spooked too? Nah, he just called a second ago. He can't be. I don't know, maybe if he saw us just crouched here? <whistles> that little animation he did where he lifted his front leg, it looked like an animal that's been recently spooked. But him calling is the reason I even looked over there. So we're going to try to bring him in. We're going to try to take him with the bow because this is a good road here area. And if this guy falls short, we don't want to spook everything else. But he's wider set. I think maybe got a little bit better like time length. Bases look decent. I could see it. I could see another 160, low 170s too. Something maybe worth noting. Generally speaking, like higher scoring road here don't trot into calls. They'll walk in. Now he's not a monster, so I'm really not sure it matters here. But what does matter is try to drop him. I think we shot him right through the heart because that was too low, realistically. But uh, there's a tiny buck coming in there. I guess we're better off not spooking things, although we just did, so never mind. Do we have enough for this guy then? That was not a hard shot. Long liver, stomach, intestine. 166, so close again. But it's going to fall just a little bit shy. So we're going to keep on scooting up this way then. And hopefully we can spot another one that's, I mean, ideally a, a guaranteed estimate would be nice. Gotta be honest, I'm not sure I love this one either. 155 to 205. So 
it's probably going to be in that 160, 170 range. But really, to me, it looks smaller than, honestly, both of the last two. Again, kind of got lucky with that shot. We were a little far left. And roe are a weird one. They'll actually survive some shots that larger animals will not. So, definitely lucked out. But I think we're going to be just a little bit shy yet again. What? Never mind. <laughs> How is that 195? Hold on. Maybe there's more mass there? I think there is. I don't know. I'm not going to complain. Because I thought we might have a long, long road ahead of us. We were getting about as far north as I'd like to without finding anything big. Like, there are far more road here if you keep following the, the river up. But I feel like the numbers start to go down the further north you go. So, at this stage, I think we can just go ahead and fast travel. Um, there's usually a lot of rock tarmigan up here, actually, so this should be pretty easy. Might get a chance at this one. It's going to be really close. Can't quite tell. Are we going to be able to get close enough to get a reasonable shot? He's got to be airborne. Got him. All right. Not bad. So a little under an hour here on Valdebois. That knocks out two of the four objectives left. The Lynx one, I think we're going to save for last. I'm just... That one can be such a pain. What we need, I believe, is a lynx that's not a common. So I think basically we're looking for a gray, because there's not a bunch of uncommon fur types. So, let's go and try to get the third objective done. But not too bad. And we return to a familiar place for that third objective. We need a 320 plus Roosevelt Elk, and we're going to try to do that here on Redfeather Falls. So, the plan for now is to move down this path towards the couple of towers. Typically, there's a couple of elk just in this kind of area right next to the lodge. Gonna try to hunt around here, and if that doesn't work, we'll fast travel to another spot. Well, I guess if there's a silver lining here, it's that we're not gonna be disappointed by the score of this one like we were with the first couple of road here. That is not even remotely close, so we can drop him. I actually think that cow and bull were coming in as just two solo elk. I'm pretty sure this is not a herd. They were... Like, they called from so far away, they've been kind of calling as they've been coming in. And I had no indication of any other elk in the group, so pretty sure that kind of just happened that they were in the same area. As for this one, double lung and he is going to be an 80 score with a 12 CSS. We'll continue forward, we got a decent distance till that other tower. Fast travel may be looking a little more likely though. Not gonna lie, this is kind of a bummer. 460 to 490 kilo, but... Pretty low scoring in the grand scheme of things. And there's a whole bunch of elk coming in, but I'm pretty sure that one in the front is the absolute best one. So we'll try to take that out. And we're now kind of in like elk and whitetail territory, so maybe we can do a little bit of deer hunting in the process. But obviously the goal is going to be to get that 320 plus elk, because I have no idea what that hunt for the lynx could be like. If we get lucky, could be no big deal. If not, that could take longer than everything thus far even has. So, our best bull, not that that was going to be a very difficult thing, 470 kilo darn near. He was, if the score's ever going to calculate, and maybe it's just not going to, 234. So I guess not bad. We need about another 100 inches or so. So what we'll do is make a little loop kind of down and around here, and then make our way up to the north. Well, that would be the luck, wouldn't it? <laughs> A 165 to 190 whitetail. Did he look at us or did he stop to feed? Not sure what that little animation was, but we've got the 30 odd six here. Not the best scope. But if he kind of walks into the open, maybe we can get a shot. Was that him that grunted then? It was. Can probably get a crack at him there if he stays still. Of course, that's not going to happen. So I'll have to wait till he clears the trees. But he's definitely close enough that even with this scope, it won't be too big a deal. That's going to drop him. And I mean, we'll take a decent buck as we go along. That was, again, why I was excited to do this hunt with so few objectives, even though it's been a little slower getting those objectives done than I wanted. We can take the time to call in different stuff. And in this case, actually, that guy didn't call until we just had that there. I saw him first. Looking like a 7x7, but not a bad one. Pretty clean. I don't see any stickers or anything like that. One short time I saw it just as we claimed him, 167. So not special by any stretch, but certainly better than any of the elk that we shot. And our 25th classic 30-06 bolt action harvest. We'll take it. We 
just might have what we need. That's not the greatest. 305 to 350. He's got a big frame. A couple of short tines, only one back tine. And with this cow sneaking in here, this is probably going to be another opportunity for the 30 out 6. I think that should get there, but man, those short tines really hurt. So I just want to make sure. Typically, there's five elk. I think we're seeing all five now. So probably we just go ahead and try to take him out. On the off chance that there was an even bigger one in there, I wanted to at least not shoot until we got to see them all. I really don't like what's happening here, because that cow's getting close and there's not much of a good shot. Although, I think the call's running out. So let's hit him. Definitely got him. Probably single long. He'll run a little bit. But before they would have just turned around and walked away, wanted to get that shot in there. He's down. So do we have a case of maybe just on the other side of the score estimate this time, unlike the road here, hopefully. It's really gonna come down to just if there's enough, like frame, beam length, all that kind of stuff. Cause both of these times, like the, the matching ones, are super, super short and that really hurts things with the lack of back time. So fingers crossed here, we know 305 minimum, not even 400 kilo, he's only 307. If he had normal length for those times, he was 320, but yet again, Antlered animals just not cooperating today. I mean, the estimate gives this guy a chance, 285 to 330, but I can't say I'm feeling supremely confident with this one. It's a way smaller frame than the 307, and he's got one long time and one short time. Couple more elk coming in over here on the right side though. Hopefully there's something bigger in there than that, but if we get this shot off quickly, and provide we can actually drop him. They shouldn't hear this and should keep coming in. What a weird spot. I didn't drop him. Are we going to be able to still have the other ones coming in? I don't think they spooked. Going to be okay there. Question is, is there anything in there that's actually going to help us? There's at least three bulls that I've seen. And there's one cow in there. So unless there's one additional elk somewhere, not sure that it's really going to matter. Just a whole bunch of average unfortunately no other big ones so we can hope that even though the mags on that one was 330 that maybe he eclipses 320 but in the interest of not having the track too let's see can we get this guy with the 30 out six that'll work and i did see it was single lung blood there below the tree so won't be a terribly long track hopefully that will be good enough because if that doesn't do it it could be a little while until we find another one. When you start moving through the mountains here on like the northern part of Red Feather, it can be pretty few and far between. So this guy, double on him with the 30 odd 6, 234 score. Interesting too, this guy didn't run far at all. I don't know, maybe only one way to find out. Ended up with a single long shot, obviously. Two minute wound time at 293. Yeah, he's even smaller than the last one. So two with a chance. Kind of like the road here, actually. None that have made it. So we're going to head up towards the corner and just kind of hope we get a bugle and maybe something works out. Could this be it? It has to be 295 to 340. Got one short time, but the double back time certainly help. And I think we're just going to go with the 30 out six here. Could have shot him there, but I had to wait for that. That would have been too cool to just make go away. But the circumstances of this hunt have kind of changed. If you saw the community tab post earlier today, the internet has absolutely not been cooperating. So I had to cancel the stream. And instead, this video now drops today. So a lot has to happen in a short period of time. My goodness, that was close, 324. I'm so glad I made it because going from basically having all evening to at some stage get the links and elk to having a couple hours, at least if the video is going to come out on time, uh, that is sort of problematic, but I didn't realize it. He has triple back tines. At the end of the day, that actually made the difference because, what, we made it by all of four? Now we get to go to Hemeldahl and kind of hope that the Lynx like us. So just a nice little trophy shot with our St. Patrick's Day best and the 30 on six, which probably isn't in too many of our trophy shots. And now we get to go and see if we can have any luck with the Eurasian Lynx. And if I'm not mistaken, the last time that we came here for a Lynx hunt was actually our Christmas Day hunt when the Yule Cats were here. And we did end up getting an absolute giant, our biggest one ever, 11 plus, as the Yule Cat, which was pretty darn cool. In this case, 
We need a lynx that is anything but the common fur, and hopefully we can run into one sooner rather than later. Now I'm no lynx expert, but I do believe this is actually the common fur, which is not what we want to see. There's a much lighter color, kind of almost silvery in a way that's referred to as gray. That's, to my knowledge, the only uncommon that there actually is. Now we could get absurdly lucky and run into a rare, but other than that, I think we're looking for that much lighter coloration lynx. So just a little female here, and we might as well take it out and sort of get it out of the way, but this is the common indeed 12.0 kilograms. Maybe that indicates some good luck our way, but uh, very clearly that is not going to do the objective. Oh my goodness. I think we're going to do this. Is that the, I can't tell. That's a big lynx. Is that the uncommon? Is that gray or, I think that's gray. I'm pretty sure that's gray. It's not nearly as sort of almost cinnamon-y cinnamon brown as the other one. I don't know, I'm second guessing myself now. It looks much paler to me. So before it gets too close and just out of sight there, ooh, could that log kind of get in the way? Probably. I just want to stay on them because they can, they genuinely can just disappear and end up right next to you before you know it. So as long as we keep him in sight, I'm going to pop him through the trees there because I really don't want him to just show up like right here. We have no camouflage on, obviously, with our St. Patrick stuff. If he got that close, I think he could spook. I'm unsure, honestly. I just can't tell. We're going to have to claim him. He is common. 39.4 kilo. 11 score is huge, <laughs> but that's still not going to get the mission done. So I'll tell you what. In the interest of getting this video out on time, what I'm going to do is go ahead and wrap up here, and I'll just continue Lynx hunting. If you're in my Discord, I'll post in the classic chat if and when I get a Grey Lynx tonight. The missions can only be done, I think, until tomorrow. So, gotta spend time on this, gotta try to get it done. The rewards are pretty good, I think it's 3,000 GM and a tree stand, something like that. But, we've managed to get everything done except that. I thought we just had it there, and 11 plus Lynx is really solid, though. And just based on the way everything else has gone thus far today, I said we've killed some of our craziest trophies during these events, and 11 plus Lynx is really, really solid. He's not quite as big as that Yule Cat we killed back on Christmas Day, but pretty darn close, I will absolutely take that. So anyway, as always, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for your patience with all the schedule changes and everything going on today. There will be a live stream, assuming the internet cooperates tomorrow, and a video to make up for everything and get us back on track. But as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.